Hi folks, in this video we talk about how to do arithmetic with infinite numbers. We can use the same concept of a one-to-one -one correspondence to show that this makes sense. What I want you to do is consider what would aleph naught plus one look like and how would you talk about the size of aleph naught plus one? Well, let, I'll, I'll give you one example here and then you can figure out how to do the other two equations on this slide. What we need to do is we need to come up with our definitional set for aleph naught, that's the natural numbers, and then we need to add one more element into it. And that, can be, that element can be anything. It can be, it can be you, it can be uh, the earth, it can be your best friend. We just need to add something in there that's not a natural number. I'm gonna to refer to that as A1. And my only restriction about what A1 is, is it has to not be one of these numbers over here. So A1 is anything else. I throw that in this set. Now this set is aleph naught plus one. It's aleph naught with one additional member. The thing to not get confused about is, we're not putting the number one in to the natural numbers. We need to put one element in. Of course, that element cannot be the number one because the number one is already in the natural numbers. So it just needs to be anything else. And what we need to do in order to wonder what size is this new set is compare it to the natural numbers and see if we can create a one-to-one -one correspondence. Of course, that's easy. I'm just gonna pair zero with my best friend and then one with zero, two with one, three with two, et cetera. Yes, aleph naught plus one. If I add one to aleph naught, I just get aleph naught again. This makes infinity seem like a very weird concept. If we add an, uh, the number one to it, it still is the same size. For a long time, people thought the concept of infinity didn't even make sense because of these things. But what we can do in set theory is actually use logic rigorously to prove that the concept of infinity makes perfectly good sense. And this is how you do arithmetic with it. Now, if you understand how that went, pause your videos and see if you can answer the next question. What is aleph naught plus four? What would that look like? Okay, let's talk about the answer. In order to do this set, what we need is we need a set with, of aleph naught with four more members. And now you can see the point of my subscripting A with the letter one, the number one. I need four new things, A, one, two, three, and four, where none of these are identical to each other and none of these things are natural numbers. Remember, when I'm doing aleph naught plus four, this does not mean I'm adding the number four into the set of natural numbers because this number four is already in that set. I need four new elements added, in, you know, put into a set with all the natural numbers and I need to wonder what's the cardinality of this thing? How big is that? And of course that is just aleph naught again. Once you get the trick for these one-to-one -one correspondences, you can see they work for almost anything. If I can figure out a way to order these things in a linear way so that there's a beginning and then there's the next one and the next one and the next one in a well-behaved way, then this is just gonna be the same size as the natural numbers. So there's my correspondence for that one. Now, how about aleph naught plus aleph naught? Is this gonna be any bigger? Well, pause your videos and see if you can answer that question. Okay, the answer is no, of course. Uh, this is still aleph naught. Because th this is just, remember, like the easiest way to think of this is the odd and the even numbers. You know, if, if you know the odd numbers are size aleph naught, we proved that in a different video. This, a similar proof allows you to prove that the even numbers are aleph naught. And of course, those sets, even though they're both aleph naught, if, if we put them all together in the order of the natural numbers, of course that's the same size as the natural numbers. Another way to think about it is our proof that the positive and negative integers are the same size as aleph naught. Those, you know, the positive integers are infinite, the negative integers are infinite, but again, I can flip flop between them, like that Z proof, and still show you that those are aleph naught. So there's many different ways of making this proof work. Uh, that still is aleph naught. Now my next question is, let's get even more interesting. Forget infinity plus infinity. What about infinity times infinity? And whenever I think of this question, I always think of this AT&T commercial, which I just love, when these kids are talking about the concept of infinity in this little focus group um, with this guy. If you haven't watched this video, it's only a 30 second AT&T ad. I put it in Canvas. So stop now and go and watch that video uh, first before continuing. Of course, the guy in the focus group doesn't think infinity times infinity even makes sense. Uh, but we'll show him that it does. What I want you to decide is how big is infinity times infinity? How big is aleph naught times aleph naught? Is it smaller, larger, is it, is it still aleph naught, or does it not even make sense at all? Well, here's a way to think about the question if you're having a hard time visualizing it. Think about what two times four is, because you just array those orthogonally in a, in a cross, you know, vertically and horizontally, for example. You know, if I have two, go, two rows, and, and four columns or something, then the number of, of dots 
the number of studs on this Lego brick is two times four. And so if we wanted to infinity times infinity, what we would need is we would just need like an infinitely big Lego brick. Like th they go infinitely in one direction and then infinitely in another direction. And then the number of studs on that thing, on that infinitely big Lego brick would be infinity times infinity. Or forget about Lego bricks. If you played Minecraft, it's even easier to visualize. What we have here is we have an infinitely, you know, think about a flat Minecraft world. There's an infinite number of discrete blocks going in that direction to the horizon. And there's an infinite number of going in each to the left and the right. So the number of blocks on one level plane of a Minecraft, flat Minecraft world is another way of visualizing what infinity times infinity is. Well, how many Minecraft blocks is that? That's the question I'm asking you. So pause your videos and, and try to figure out what the answer is. Okay, now I think people tend to think this doesn't make sense, but I've already told you the guy in the commercial is wrong. It does make sense. Uh, you, your next thought might be, it's gotta be larger than Aleph Nott. Uh, it's, you pr nobody probably said it's smaller than Aleph Nott, but you might think it has to be larger, but the answer is no, it still is Aleph Nott. How would we do it? All you need to do to prove that this is the same size as the natural numbers is figure out how to make a one to one correspondence between every one of these Minecraft blocks in this big flat world and the natural numbers. To do that, what you need to find is a linear ordering such that every one of these would be covered. Now there's lots of ways of attempting that and failing. If I start on one block and then start walking infinitely in one direction, I'm gonna cover an infinite number of blocks and every natural number is gonna get paired with that, but I'm gonna leave all of these other blocks unpaired. So that would have failed. That's kind of like our first attempt at pairing off the integers that failed. But that does not mean that there's no way of doing it. And in fact, there's many ways of doing it. The simplest way is to start and start anywhere and walk in a spiral. Whatever block you're standing on, you know, walk one block over and then one block up and then two blocks over and then keep going in this earth and then keep going in this spiral, going further and further out. You know, if you want to prove to yourself this works, place a torch in every block that you walk on and then keep going in the spiral. And you see, if you think about it, if you sort of get visually what happens here, there is no block in this world which will eventually not get put a torch put on it if you keep going. So eventually, for any, like think of a random block way out there. Well, eventually if you walk in the spiral long enough, you're gonna get to that block and you're gonna put a torch on it too. So th this is a way of creating a linear ordering. It doesn't stop, of course, but neither do the natural numbers. The natural numbers go on infinitely and this goes on infinitely. And this is a one-to-one -one correspondence. So even though, infinity times infinity seems to not make sense or it seems bigger than the natural numbers, this actually shows that it is still the same size as the natural numbers. It is Aleph not. So in this video, what you learned is to how to think about arithmetic using this concept of one-to-one -one correspondence to talk about uh, infinitely sized sets. Okay, thanks.